Look at these gorgeous, rosy red, vine ripened tomatoes. Mmm, and they smell great too. Okay, so it's only spring, and yes, I did buy these at the local grocery store, but just imagine for a moment cupping your very own tomatoes, ones that you've grown yourself, radiating sun-soaked goodness and with a deep aroma to match. Well, that could be you in just a few months' time, and here's how to do it. The first job is deciding what to grow, and with at least 10,000 different varieties of tomato, there's certainly plenty to choose from, including cherry tomatoes, paste types, varieties with standard round fruits, and chunky beefsteak tomatoes. Whatever you grow, they'll fall into one of two categories, bush tomatoes, sometimes called determinate tomatoes, which grow to around three feet or one metre tall, and vining tomatoes, also called indeterminate or cordon tomatoes, which continue growing to produce fruits on one long stem. Only got a hanging basket? Hey, no problem. There are compact tomatoes for this situation too. Tomatoes love warmth and sunshine, whether grown in the ground or in pots. Some varieties cope better with cooler climates than others, while heat-tolerant tomatoes are best suited to hot climates. Look carefully at variety descriptions and choose one that's right for your garden. Tomatoes need a soil or potting mix rich in nutrients. Prepare beds in advance by incorporating plenty of organic matter, such as compost or well-rotted manure, to give the soil a boost ahead of planting time. Container-grown tomatoes need a particularly good quality potting mix, which may need topping up as they grow. So from early spring, six to eight weeks before your last frost date. Our garden planner can help you decide exactly when, because the sowing recommendations and the plant list accompanying every plan you make are based on data from your nearest weather station. Okay, so let's get sowing. Fill pots with seed or all-purpose potting mix, then tamp down to leave a smooth surface. Space seeds individually over the surface, about an inch or two centimetres apart, and then cover with a little more potting mix. Move pots to a propagator or indoor windowsill. If you haven't got a propagator, cover the pot with clear plastic until after germination to create a humid environment around the seeds. Germination is quickest at 70 Fahrenheit, that's 20 to 21 degrees Celsius, but I wouldn't obsess about this. These seedlings germinated on this windowsill without any special treatment whatsoever, and now they're ready for the next step. Once seedlings are big enough to handle, transplant them into their own pots. Carefully remove the seedlings from their nursery pot, and then, picking them up gently by the leaves, move them to pre-filled pots of potting mix. Make a deep hole like this and lower them in. Set them a lot deeper than they were growing before so that most of the stem is buried right up to the lowest leaves. New roots will grow from the buried stems, helping to give sturdier seedlings. If the young plants fill their pots before it's time to plant them, pot them on again into larger containers. Plant tomatoes for growing under cover up to three weeks ahead of your last frost date. Use pots at least a foot or 30 centimetres wide and set plants nice and deep. Again, you want to bury the lowest part of the stem to help anchor the plant. It's worth using bigger pots if you can. The extra potting mix means plants will need watering less often. I'm tying these bush tomatoes to a sturdy stake, which should keep them from toppling over. Pots are great for indoors or out, as are purpose-sold grow bags like these. Planting into a bottomless pot means the plants can produce more roots along the buried portion of stem, which helps it to draw up more nutrients and also provides a little more support. Don't forget your full-length supports for vining tomatoes. These plants are supported by strong twine tied to the base of the stems and suspended from a horizontal wire up above. Another method is to bury the twine beneath the root ball at planting time. Outdoor tomatoes need acclimatising before planting by leaving them outside for progressively longer over one or two weeks. Start by popping plants outside on a warm day for just a few hours and build up from there. 
Be very careful to avoid windy spots and bring plants back under cover on chilly nights. Finally, plant them about 18 inches or 45 centimeters apart once the risk of frost has passed. Bush tomatoes can be supported simply by tying them into canes or stakes. Vining types on the other hand require regular attention. Weave the top of the stems around string or twine supports as they grow, or tie stems to canes using soft string. Add ties close to the trusses in order to lend extra support to heavy fruits. You can provide additional support for both types by growing inside a wire cage like this, which will take much of the weight of the fruit as they grow. Remove all side shoots from vining tomatoes, that's any shoots growing between the main stem and the leaves, sort of like the armpits of the plant. This will concentrate the plant's energy on fruit production. Inspect plants regularly and snap them off while they're still young. Stop finding tomatoes growing any further once they reach the top of the greenhouse or polytunnel or, in more temperate climates, once they've set four to five trusses to encourage them all to ripen before autumn. To do this, simply cut out or pinch off the very top of the plant. Water your tomatoes whenever the potting mix or soil starts to dry out. The first flower truss is your cue to begin regular applications of a high potassium tomato feed which will help to produce lots of good sized fruits. Temperatures in greenhouses and tunnels can soar on sunny days. Open wide vents and doors which will also ensure pollinators have easy access to go about their work. Twanging or tapping supports also helps flowers to successfully pollinate. When the fruits are ready, pick them. Go over plants regularly so you don't miss any. Like many fruiting vegetables, the more you pick, the more plants respond by producing even more. I hope you found that whistle stop tour of tomatoes useful. Check out our other videos on the topic too, including how to choose varieties, ideas for supporting plants, how to address common problems, and useful in my climate at least, how to ripen stubbornly green tomatoes at the end of the growing season. You can find links to them down below. Now, what tomatoes are you planning on growing this summer? A tried and tested classic or perhaps something gloriously quirky? Let us know in the comments section. Thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up on your way out and check you've subscribed too. I'll catch you next time.